welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Rosie Henshaw. If you're new here, then welcome. It's lovely to meet you. And if you're already existing, guys, and thank you so much for coming back. Just grab yourselves a nice cup of tea and some snacks. I've actually got a cup of tea. What do you know? Treat yourself. Why not? I feel like I haven't had tea for the camera in absolutely ages. But this morning, I missed my cup of tea on the school run. So now I'm having mine. Now that I'm ready to film. So today's video is a bit of a random one. I'm going to be making a wreath and I'm also going to be making like a little tablescape um, for my table to make it more spring inspired. As you can see, I do love flowers. <laughs> I do love flowers. Um, I'm named after a flower too, so maybe that has something to do with it. Um, but today I wanted to just video a long while I make my wreath. So I feel like after Christmas, it gets really, really empty looking and really boring looking and I love the cleanness as soon as everything comes down on the first like you know, in January and stuff but then I start itching because I'm like it hasn't got no fancy little decor out now I do decorate a little bit for Valentine's Day just in my kitchen I've got a few little pom-pom heart bits and stuff that I really love putting out and it is Al um, Alfie's birthday as well on Valentine's Day so we have to have his birthday stuff out which I love having out and I've got some chalk pens where I like to draw on the bifold doors now that's an addition and um, every year I just write loads of little things for them and draw pictures for them on the bifolds to decorate so I don't want like crazy amounts of stuff out until sort of spring time however i'm going to be making a wreath for my door this is going to be on the internal door i will say that obviously you can use different things if you want on the external and um, to make it feel a bit more spring because it looks empty now the christmas wreath is down and also as well my dining table i always had like a nice set of like christmasy flowers on it or i'd have like a bowl with like christmasy bits in it some ball balls or a poinsettia or a table centerpiece i change it up each year but i find in my kitchen without making all my sides cluttered and you know making more messy when you've got to prepare dinner i can see that and it looks really nice to have something spring fried on there to make it feel really good so i'm gonna just Add a few bits to my house today so i am going to start off with the wreath i've got my compost at the side here as well ready for my pot in and um, so this wreath i got from the range um, and it's really nice i think i paid 12.99 for this now i did say i've got a little um spring haul that i'm gonna upload as well and basically i got this because the wreath i reuse every single year day in day out was a eucalyptus wreath it's basically been hung on my door for the last six years straight um, because I literally do it for autumn. I put pumpkins in it. Halloween, I'll add some Halloweeny bits in there. With Christmas, I'll like, add Christmassy bits to it. Valentine's, I'll put hearts in. Easter, I'll put eggs. And I've just used the wreath to death. And it's looking it's like it's seen better days. So I am going to fluff about with it. However, I saw this one and I thought, do you know what? For £12.99, this is really cute. And um, you can obviously just get a wicker base really cheaply from somewhere and add the foliage. But I thought by the time I buy all the foliage like this, works out roughly the same. So it's secured on. This is from the range and it's £12.99. Um, and I'm going to be adding some really nice sort of spring florals to this. So in there, this is what I was going to say. Um, I got these and these are actually dried lavender. So that's why they're going to be on my internal door, like my porch door, not my external. Um, just because of the rain and stuff at the moment and because it's dried florals. However, if you use an artificial, stick it on the front door, it's not a problem. Um, it's just too windy where I live and then it just end up blowing off the door anyway. So I have it on my internal door, you can see it as well. And it's just a nice little thing as you come in. Um, so I got this bundle, I can't remember how much I paid for this now, it's only a couple of pounds, um, and it's dried floral. So I'm going to be adding some of these in there, which I feel really nice, in lavender. I've gone for like a lavender thing this uh, spring for some reason. I'm really liking like the pinks and purples. And I also got this, which I think would be quite cute to have like outside the house, or stacked up for an Easter display. Um, and I think this is 3 99 from there. I can't remember because I filmed it, I forgot now. Um, and I thought I'm gonna cut this up and add a few of these to this reef to make it more expansive looking. <laughs> um, so, and I also have got some foliage that I've just grabbed from down the shed. I bought these a good few months ago. I've got some like fern bits some hydrangeas you would have seen these if you watch my videos in previous hauls um i think i use these for the cd box display holder and like some pink ones so i might use some of them as well but we'll, we'll see um now i need to get my secretaries even though these are um dried and faux they'll be fine i'm just going to use these from the suppliers so i'm going to start off i'm going to lower this as well i think so you can see a bit better Ready? I don't know if you can see better. Can you? 
yeah i'll hold it up so you can see a bit better now um i'm going to start off by adding some of the larger twigs to make this wreath look really big and fuller so i'm going to cut off some of these twigs now they are all pretty well glued in together because this is meant to be like a display bunch the confetti is going to go everywhere so have your hoover at the ready i will just say um, and i'm going to snip these in once I've got a bunch together, because they're not together, Tara, you have to pull, I do have to apologise, I have got a really funny nose. I've got the cold that's going around for everyone. So little bunches like this. I have got a little bit of florist wire and my little metal cutters. And what I will do is I will just make sure to tie these up and secure them together because obviously they're all tied at the bottom together. But because I'm using individual bits, I still want and give it a little twist. Now, I know I probably could have used this bit to add it to the actual wreath, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to use another bit just to be extra, extra secure. Now, you can use florist wire for this, or you can um, just use ribbon. Sometimes I just sort of like, if it's a more of a, sorry, I'm going to get a tissue because my nose is really runny. Right. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, if it's more of a fuller wreath, these can just be shoved in and they'll just stay in without tying them in. So I'm going to just wrap this bit of wire around it once. And then when I know roughly where I'm going to want to put it, I'm just going to shove it behind this bit of foliage because it's taller. And shove it in and then tie it up at the back and just twist it. Oh, make sure to make it nice and tight. And then just tuck it in and then I'm gonna just go around and do quite a lot of these now I'll go around and then I'm gonna go around with the lilac as well because I think that look quite nice added in there so all I'm doing is it's just taking some nice bunches of this and doing the same thing again so I'm gonna continue and then I'll show you once we've um, added lots more If you've got any bits that are longer on some bits than on others you can obviously just trim them down a little bit i am trimming them ever so slightly on some bits um but i really like the sort of twiggy look that you get in the background and um, i just feel like when you get to see a lot of like reefs that are made um from quite expensive places they're always really very country and rustic so now i'm going to be adding a little bit of the oh, my spoon there ready <laughs> And um, then I'm going to be using a little bit of the dried lavender, like the purple bunch, because I feel like this is just a really nice colour to add. So this is going to go slightly more in the front sections of these. Now, I roughly want about five. You want to do it in sort of odd numbers. Odd numbers always look nicer. So about five sections of this. Um, now, these are really beautiful colours, as you can see. Now, I'm going to have to snip these down quite a bit. Now, these at the bottom, they don't fray out as much. So trimming them down roughly about half i would say obviously it depends what you're using in yours and um, but if you do want to go and get the same dried florals because this wreath will be made for like under 20 pound um and that's including something i'm going to share as well to turn it into an easter wreath and um, so it'd be under 20 pound to create this and obviously all of these bits you can take out and add each year for easter just put them in a little box like a airtight container store it in your shed um, I think I've gone a bit too tall with these, but I can tuck them in, I think. Let's have a look. I um, might need to go a bit shorter. Yeah, I'm going to have to go for short bunches. So we're going for like that sort of size. Put that to the side. Um, and then um, if you're using like artificial, like I say, even better, you haven't got to make sure it's like airtight, but with the dried florals, I always wrap them in some sort of like tissue and then put them in an airtight container because then they last much longer and then I can just reuse them each season that I want to use them for. Uh, yeah, that's perfect. So I'm gonna add the little bits of lilac now. So I'm gonna want a lot more of these bunches in this to really give it some really lovely color. And I think with the blossoms of the white as well, it just looks really, really lovely. Right, where's that gone? Right, let's tie this in. Making sure you always twist them at the back, guys, to make sure it's really, really secure. 
and then you just snip it out when you're done. Um, there we go, we're gonna add some lavender. I have a little sip of my tea as well. I'm surprised there's no confetti in there for the amount of stuff that's about. Um, so yeah, crack on, get these. So probably bunches about that thickness. And what I can do is make a bunch that big and then make another bunch out of these ones, but just sort of like layer them down slightly so they look a bit more um, organic rather than just straight cut across. They look like they're less likely to be um cut but i'll use them i'll put them to the side the straight cut ones i'm going to go around with all these first and then add those after so that it's very flowing the look of it i got some really cute bits actually from the charity shop recently that are going to be perfect for easter and spring so we'll have to do a little horn that most things i've got were like a pound um, and i've got some little baskets and some cute little bits that I want to sort of upcycle for spring. Um, it's just always hard doing craft videos because they are the most messy and the most time consuming. And it's hard with Albert where he's small. That is generally the only reason I found like, when I started doing my YouTube, that was when my little one, Alf Alfie, um, it was my little one then, had just literally started his like 15 hours at preschool. And I'd always been at home with him and I just had that little bit of extra time. And if anything, I felt a little bit bored without him so that's why i started my youtube to be honest with you it gave me like something to do like a little bit of a hobby in the background and i was making the crafts anyway so i thought i might as well do it um but it's crazy because now some of you guys love the crafts and i haven't really got the time to do them as much but albert's two when he turns three he'll get his 15 hours um at nursery so we haven't got long <laughs> And I'll be back probably annoying you with the amount of crafts that I do to make up because I'm always making stuff in the background. And sometimes I get messages and they'll be like, Rosie, where's that from? And I'm like, oh, I made that. And it's like, well, why have you not done a tutorial on it, love? And it's just because it's sometimes easier of an evening once the kids are in bed to just sit there and do like a little bit of crafting. But the lighting is always awful when it's done at night time. Um, and sometimes it's like, yeah, just get on with it and just do it. So we're adding lots of the lavender. This is starting to look really, really rustic and really beautiful. Like this is the sort of thing that you could definitely get from like a farm store for quite expensive money. Um, but we're not paying expensive money for this. So this was 2 99 these dried lavenders. That was 12 99 so it's 15. Did get that, I'm using that as well. It's 20, yeah, 19 pound. And then once we use the other thing, it'd be 21 if you want to use the other thing that I'm going to put in this. Um, 22 if you haven't got florist wire. But I know most of you that watch the wreath making and the DIYs have gone on my advice and gone and got some of this florist wire from the pound shop because it's the best place to get it. It's so cheap and I always buy lots of it at Christmas because I do the wreath making workshop with my friends. Um, I'm thinking this year, so I done the pumpkin um, painting with my friends last year and I got all like pressed flowers and like come round, we've done like a nice breakfast, pots of tea and we've done some pumpkin painting and then for Christmas, I done the wreath making here. So I'm thinking for spring, I'm thinking of doing like um, making DIY um Bunny baskets, if you like bread and stuff, or like cakes or snacks, so you can even do them for the children for when they do their egg egg hunts. But yeah, bunny baskets I'm thinking of doing. Um, that's what I'm thinking anyway. Trim that one. I love these more wild ones. I feel like they look much nicer. I am going to add a little bit more foliage. And the only reason I am is because this um, reef, is more sparse and more expensive. It is twelve ninety nine though, so it is really reasonable. I mean, don't get me wrong; you probably could go on Amazon and get like a, with my eucalyptus one. It was a much more fuller reef to begin with, if that makes sense. And um, so, not for colour wise, but just to bulk it a little bit more. I mean, obviously, if you already have a reef, use that. You can even use a little paintbrush, a dry brush, a few little bits of white on the edges to recreate um, this blossom effect. I've done that before on reefs. Um, and if you wanted to, you could even, let me do a little trim that one up, um, or just get like a fuller wreath. I just 
want to fill this up this is going to be more one that i'm going to use for like spring and stuff i feel like at christmas time i will still use my eucalyptus one because it's so full of like red berries orange slices you know anything that i add to it at christmas that you don't really even see the foliage um so it's not an issue but i think in spring and summer the foliage is kind of the star of the show isn't it um so i've got those i don't know whether to add more lavender yes I literally went to put it on. More is more in this situation, guys. More is more. Um, let's add this instead. So I might just add these. I might not even need more foliage by the time I've done the lavender. They did have these in like a pinky colour as well. Um, but I don't think they were lavender. I think they were some kind of other flower. And Home Bargains also do um, little bundles of um, dried florals as well. If you want to go in there and have a look in there instead. Is it too much lavender now? Yeah, it's too much lavender now. I was wrong. What less is more. Um, so I've got these. Now, I was actually thinking of putting some twigs in this as well. Like, just go outside, forage for a few twigs somewhere. But I'm quite liking just the twig effect from this bunch. And I mean, I only use a tiny bit of that, um, that bunch. I've still got half of my lavender left. Literally got half of my lavender left. Um, and I only use a tiny bit here. So what I'm thinking of doing is, is cutting these down and adding them to jars around the house with other flowers in it so you can still reuse them i'm going to separate them put them in my florist supplies so oh what am i treading on treading on a stick of lavender and um, so the for floristry i don't really know what to add i've got like a eucalyptus stem that i've got and um, this was from home bargains i believe very very cheap they also do these in the pound shop i think this one was this a pound shop one i'm not sure um i don't know whether to add just a tiny sprig of eucalyptus now and again um, so let me know your thoughts because I'm thinking it might add only the white colours, silly girl. And um, I'm thinking to add these because I think it might look rather nice just having that extra little bit. Maybe I'm just addicted to eucalyptus because I'm used to doing my eucalyptus wreath. Um, so I'm used to seeing the eucalyptus when I make the wreaths. I'm going to add a few of these stems. Now these probably won't need holding in place. They can just be shoved through. Oh, I don't know. I feel like I'm going to have to go quite a lot, oh, quite a bit round to see whether it's going to look nice or not. I'll add a few stems and we'll see how we get on. This one's a nice size stem. Just got to trim it down. <laughs> how long is this video? Let's make sure they're not too long, Rosie, for people. Um, and then pop this one. I feel like it's just adding a little bit of dimension to the floristry, to the foliage. Could be wrong. Yeah, I feel like it's adding a bit of that dark powdery green to it. So obviously, you can add as much foliage or a little as foliage as you want. I'm not going to need a lot of these. Tuck that little bit of lavender in behind the foliage as well. And then... Add the stems yeah it's just adding that little little extra bit i think you don't actually need it but i've already got this down in my craft supplies so why not and i mean to be honest with you you can get it for a pound so you know if this is going to be your spring wreath forever i mean i always make wreaths not just for that one year they are i don't just purchase it and think oh, i'll just make something new every year i just add the bits to it and these can always be used throughout the year yeah, it's starting to look really nice now. Look at me. Yeah, it's my own roof. Like, oh, Rosie, you're doing a fantastic job there, girl. <laughs> I'm so modest. I'm so modest. And then I think that'd be the last one, actually. No, two more. So I'll add one more in there. And then one more. One more, and then one more, and then I'm just adding more and more and more. So I've actually only used half of that eucalyptus as well. So you don't need a lot of stuff to recreate this look. You could even take little fragments off of other little bits that you, you know, you've got them in pots and stuff. Now, I don't know what ribbon to use. Now that, to me, looks so spring and so like pretty. I need to just make sure I cover up the lavender stem edges with the foliage. But it's looking really rustic and really spring-like and just so pretty. And if you can see up close, it's got all these really pretty little bits in it. This foliage needs a little fluff out of the back, which I'm going to do in a second once I've done the ribbon. 
Now, I brought down two ribbons. I wasn't sure what ones to use. Now, I've either got this. I didn't buy any more since Christmas. I've got this jute ribbon, which I think would look really, really lovely. I've also got this, like, green velvety ribbon. I might even layer them up together um, to see. I'm really loving that sort of, like, loose, rough um, ribbons rather than something super fancy in the spring. I feel like... Top or bottom? I feel like top this time. I'm getting cool because it's a frayed velvet. So what I'm actually going to do is get a pair of scissors and I'm going to trim down the velvet, not the velvet, the burlap to the same length as the velvet. And then I'm going to put them in together more is more, as I say. <laughs> I've only just started saying. <laughs> I say like it's a catchphrase of mine. Right. Pull this down. And I feel like that's going to look really rustic and nice together. Now, I am going to make a bow. Before I put it into the... Reeve, sorry, I'm trying to talk while I'm making it. Making a bow. There is fancy ways of making bows, but like I say, I'm going for a bit of a rustic look. I make fancy bows. If you want to make a fancy bow, I think I've got it in a tutorial in one of my Christmas wreaths. Um, but for the spring wreath, I'm going really rustic. Why not? I don't know if to add a little bit of lavender to the front of it. No. Don't want to go too far. Don't want to go too far. So then I'm just going to put a tiny bit of florist wire through the back of the bow. What size should I have it? I'm going to just put a bit of florist wire through the back of the ribbon. And then I'm going to attach it to the reef. I will show you all these hung up at the end and stuff as well. And then just twist it. And then you've got your little bow ready. It's popping right. So move that eucalyptus stem. What way do we want our reef up? I'm thinking. Is it top or bottom, would you say? I really like a bottom bow, you know. Top feels Christmassy, bottom feels spring. I'm gonna go bottom. I guarantee in the comments, I'll have people go, Rosie, you should have gone top. <laughs> you should have gone top. Gary will read it and be like, <laughs> what are they telling you to go on top? <laughs> I agree. <laughs> oh, me and my disgusting little mind. I could be in a floral dress, drinking tea, making a spring foliage wreath. And I still take it there because that's my sense of humour. It is dark, but it's fine. Um, so let's faff around with it. <laughs> Get me bits of thingy off. Trim it. And then I'm just going to trim them down ever so. And um, so I'm going to trim these on a slight angle because I think they look quite pretty on an angle. Why not, eh? Why not? Should have used better scissors. I do have fabric scissors, but who cares? And then this way, I'm going to do the angle going that way. So they come down in a point. That's what I'm doing. Right. And we've got La Spring Reef, which I think just looks really pretty. Oh, so I'm going to hang that up. Oh, do you know what? I could even hang that on my oven. We'll see. I'm going to style it up after and I'll show you where I put it. Right, now, um, what I'm going to do is, is show you. I bought, last um, spring, I bought this, you might see it in the bowl. Let me just move the candle. I bought a 
sage green gingham table runner and it's like this crinkly sort of material and this goes across the table now what i thought i would do is is rather than having so i don't like having big pots of flowers and stuff in the middle because we're always at the table 24 7 like every breakfast when i have my lunch me and albert sit up the table together and obviously he's at home every day with me so we'll have our lunch every day at the table and then we have our dinner so I don't like anything too high because then you can't see each other and you've got to constantly be moving it like three times a day to put it up on the breakfast bar instead of on the table. So if you want something in the middle, I want something low level that you can see over quite easily. Um, so I've got these plant pots and I think they are really lovely. I don't really need to make the, this mess away. Do I? I can do that after. I don't want my hands because I feel a bit weird. Have you been handling um, foliage? <laughs> Scratchy. It's very scratchy. Um, so I got some planters. Now I got this, this one with a saucer. I've got saucers because they've got holes in them at the bottom. I got these. So I saw on, I think it was Lydia Elise Millen. She had a lady come around at Christmas and basically sold these planters. Now, obviously that's great. I haven't done her a disservice because she probably got so many orders after Lydia shared them anyway. Um, but I'm still letting you know where you can get them cheaper. I got these from, I think it's called Conservatory Archives. I will find it on my emails, my confirmation and show you. But let's just say I paid less than half price um, by buying them just from this sort of garden shop instead. Now, this is really lovely. I love the sort of patterns on this pot. Really nice terracotta on the outside is aged and it's got the saucer. But as I say, it's got the hole on the bottom. So you probably need a saucer unless they're going to be outside. Um, so I've got that one. I also got this pretty one that's shaped like this, which I thought was really nice. Now, if they were going outside, I just got plain ones and let them age. I love aging the plant pots. I think they look really lovely. You can just do that, plain terracotta. I wanted slight different patterns because it's going to go on my table and it's going to be a centrepiece for spring. Um, and then at Christmas, you can put poinsettias and stuff in them. And then I do have this plant pot as well. It's like a ridged one. It's got the bubbles on the top and then the bubbles on the plant. I love the little bubbles on the saucer. But I do have my rosemary in this one, but I have got another plant pot. I'm going to take this out and put my rosemary for my kitchen, for my cooking in another plant pot. Right, and then I just got some compost. Now, did you know that the range sell Wilco stuff? Only garden and paint and stuff, but I do love the Wilco garden section. It was always really cheap and reasonable and their tools and stuff, always brilliant. Um, so I got these. I'm going to lift the camera up a bit now because it doesn't need to be as low because I keep feeling like I'm just not going to be... Look at me worried that I'm not going to be, my face isn't going to be the star of the show. <laughs> I hope you all know that that's genuinely not the case. It's just like I'm trying to make sure, like, because I felt like I'd be like, hello, <laughs> which would be really annoying. Um, so I've got the planters, so I've got the compost. Now, this is a really good one because it makes up to 15 litres. It grows three times the size when you add water. Great. And the reason I love that is because I don't want to be carting around big bags of compost at all. So I'm going to open this and pour a little bit in. Now it does expand to three times the size. So be prepared. Um, and just add water. So it's so like a dried mixture. And all my trails are like tucked in a box. So well, I have got confetti in this, but I'm still going to drink it because I'm a slob. I've got the confetti. Right, and then we're gonna add a bit of water. So my trail <laughs> is tucked away with all my gardening stuff underneath the Christmas boxes. So I'm just gonna add some water and we're gonna see how it goes. I should have mixed it, not in the salsa. What an idiot. What, what idiot does that? I'm gonna to have to put it in a bowl. What am I doing? That was so, honestly, what even the hell did I actually just do there? It comes straight out the hole, the water. That was a real stupid moment, shall we just say, on Rosie's part. I can't believe I just did that. That is hilarious. I just thought, oh, it's all right. I'll just pour it through the hole. No problem, Rose. No, Rosie. You are insane. Right. Let's pour some water in the bowl. <laughs> I was getting scared. I was thinking, it's like, you know, like the kids when they add, like, I don't know, powder to something and it just rises. Huge, like these chemical experiments. Gonna add the water. I'm not gonna lie, it's a bit like <laughs> dry in the air. <laughs> I can taste the compost. I can taste it. Right, let's mix it with the water. Oh yeah. Mmm, 
it makes us it's compost, yeah, it's really not that interesting, but it's like a little science show, we're doing a cooking. Now, I'm sorry, how much more interesting would it be if that was brownie mix? Don't, because I'll forget myself. Anything chocolate in front of me, I'll be like, mm, very nice. Oh, I need more, see now? Do you leave it? Fill it up. Mix with your hands, make sure there's no dry patches. Remember it will expand up to five times. It's not, really. No, it is expanding quite a bit. Because it's just like little powder, and then you add the water and it's like baboo. It's like a little Viagra for your compost. It's compost Viagra. That's what it is. Oh, honestly, do this outside. The compost dust is a thing. I'm going to be all like right, spaced out when I go on the school run to pick the kids up later, and they'll be like, you all right, Rose? You've been having a drink of glass of wine? Oh, no, I don't drink. I've just been off the fumes. <coughs> the compost. Right, now I've got my spoon. I think that'll do, right? I think that'll do. We don't need lots in these anyway. I'm going to have to make some for the big one. I'll do the little one first. So I did get from my local florist. I always try and go local because I find if you don't use the shops near where you are, the little local ones, they just go out of business, don't they? It would be cheaper. Buy like maybe a pound or two from a supermarket. Went there and got my flowers instead. She always has a nice little selection. So I got some hyacinths. I got a white set. And I also got a violet set, so to go with the spring roof. I might have them out on the table and have that roof there because it's all like the lavender -y bits. So why not? I'm going to put a little bit of the compost at the bottom of my pot. I'm really excited now, which I know it sounds silly, but I love potting. I potted some hyacinths in like a really shallow bowl um, last year and loads of them. And I added twigs and it looked really, really pretty. And just looking after them just makes you feel very grown up. I can't lie. So I'm going to add probably one of these. I'm dare I say I'll have people say, Rosie, you've done it the wrong way. But this is how I done them last time. And they lasted. You have to definitely get a hoover after. I just sort of broke them up a little bit, making sure that you've still got quite a bit of root on each of them. It's okay to break the roots a little bit. So I've got quite a bit of root on this, on this one here. And this is a white one. Take some of the compost that's in them. I've got really dirty nails. I was hoping, and then we're going to just put just put it down, make sure to bury the roots down, got lots of space, and then I'm just going to add some of the wet compost on top. Bury it down. I always leave the root coming out, I don't know if you meant to, but I always do, that's all I've always seen when they're sold, they've always got the roots sort of sticking out of the pot. So I tend to go by what you buy them like in a shop or a garden centre and I, that's the rule. should really YouTube it, but I don't. I dare say there'll be a lot of gardening people that'll be like, Rosie, that isn't really the way you do it. But, you know, if they grow in, then good for you, girl. And uh, what am I saying? I know there'll be a lot of people that won't say that. Like, Rosie's just doing it wrong. <laughs> Who cares? Right, rinse my hands. Not that I need to because I'm going to be doing another one in a second. But... Terrible for that, wiping my hands on myself. Right, don't dust it off a bit. Mud. And we've got a beautiful little hyacinth in there. And obviously you can add some moss. I have got some moss coming. It's so annoying that it hasn't come in time. On my next video, I will show you. I got some from Amazon, um, only a couple of pounds. I'm just gonna add some moss around the top of it. I think it looks quite pretty to add the moss rather than just the compost. But you know, rather than me just not making the video at all, because I'm so impatient, I'll end up just doing all these plants, putting them on my table, and then just not videoing it, video it anyway. So it's better that I just do it. Right, gonna get on to the next one. I'm gonna do the big pot first in case I run out of hyacinths, because I didn't want to have too many in a pot. I was thinking in this large one, like three hyacinths in this, and then two or one, yeah, two in that other size one. So one, two, three. Scatter them around. Right, so I am going to just do up a bigger bowl of compost this time. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Alan Titchmarsh, eat your heart out. There's a new girl in town, and um, basically she does it in her kitchen on the sides, chokes on the fumes of the compost, and does it wrong. <laughs> but still watch out, anyway. <laughs> oh, the fumes, the fumes. It's like an apothecary. The smoke. How long is this video? Oh my goodness, it's so long. I'm gonna definitely speed up the process of the wreath. That might help it a bit. 
Oh, here we go. Are we, get, are we getting there? Getting moist. <laughs> yeah, it might just be easy to do it from the tap rose. Trying to do it in a, trying to make it aesthetic with an Emma Bridgewater drug. No rosy, you're mixing soil. Just do it, eh? You've got to do it, girl. Get over it. Right, that's mulchy enough. As is that. I'll add a bit more water to it once it's in. Because the water won't go through the hole now because it's solid. <laughs> I just hope Albert don't wake up because if he wakes up right now, I ain't going to be able to tidy this straight away. And I'm just going to have a mess. We do need some water in there. A little bit more. And now I'm going in with my hands because the spoon just doesn't suffice. Sorry, Spoon, you've been delegated as well as Ellen Titchmarsh. You're no longer important. Do you know what? I was thinking like a little bit of water would go a long way in this powder. It says you're going to need up to five litres of water. Oh, five litres of water in that little bag, of course. That was a... See, with a hand, it's much quicker. You're not just sitting here watching a whole video of me making soil. <laughs> Some of you might be really enjoying it, actually. ASMR. Oh, God, no. A little bit of tap going on in the background. Right, so I do want in this one to have a few violet ones. I want one violet and one white. So I'm just going to separate my roots. Try not to rip them right near the base. Keep, try and keep them nice and long so we've got a nice bit of root on each of them. Right, so they're the two ones I'm going to use because that's a bigger one, so I'll use that in the other pot. And then yet again, I'm just going to bury these down with the roots. Make sure the roots are nice and buried down. I will get a bit of footage as well and share it on my um, next video of how these have turned out when they come out, because when they flower, I kid you not, they just look really beautiful. It's a bit annoying that they've not flowered yet. This one kind of has, because then you could have seen what it looks like completely in this video. It's a bit of a letdown that you can see the results of a wreath, but you can't see the results of the, of the hyacinths, but it's fine. I'm sure you'll be fine about it. I'm sure you won't miss sleep over not seeing the moss. No, I will show it though. I will do it in my next um, video because I've got, like I say, the charity shop one. I'll probably just add. I'll probably just add this bit into it, like once the moss comes, what it looks like with the moss up and the flowers are all flowered. Then I've got a bit more of a sloppy picture. No people are thinking, Rosie, what are you doing, love? But I thought you're mixing with the dryer compost now. It has. It looks much nicer. Pull them out a little bit. So sit on top because they look really nice sitting on top. This one's starting to flower already. This is my new best friend. It's my hands. Look my doodle. And then I'm just going to, um, yeah, again, dust the edge. Put that one off. And then I will go and walk these as well, but this one's just going to look really cute as well. Some people will be like, Rosie, plants are for outside. But I do really love the look of it. I think it just looks really, really nice as well. This one's a really nice plant as well. Um, I love the little scallops of it. I did used to, in my old garden, before we had the extension done, I had a, from London, like an old um, chimney pot. And I used to put some like flowers and lavender and stuff in it. Um, but once, when we was having the extension done, we was taking the old beach hut down because what we had, we we live right near the seafront, and when the row of our houses were being built in the nineteen thirties, um, they was getting rid of old beach huts and making some new ones um, down there, and the builders nicked a beach hut and brought it back into our garden, and that's where they'd have their tea and stuff, and. Uh, there was pictures and things like that, and we've got the deeds, the original deeds for all the all the deeds through the years. I like a bit of history though about the house, um, and we had the original um, beach hut 
in our garden and I painted it, it was like a summer house, but it had been there for years. And obviously they, it weren't in great shape anyway for them to be getting rid of it from the seafront anyway. So by the time, obviously, nearly eight years have gone by, it was falling into disrepair. We kept getting it mended and it just weren't right. So we had to, um, we had to just say goodbye to it. But I used to love having the, that, a few plant pots outside it and the little chimney pot out there and putting lavender in it. It just looked really country and really beautiful. It's like a little greenhouse and a little potting table in there. Um, but yeah, weren't to be. Um, but when we was taking the summer house down, we ended up knocking the chimney pot. I say we, Gary and his uncle took it down and just, uh, it was one of the two of them, but they were both like, oh no, Rosie, you're not gonna be happy. I was like, why, what's the matter? They was like, we broke the chimney pot. And I was like, oh, I brought that with me from London. I got it from like a little antique, little antique shop, but oh well. <laughs> I won't talk about others, I'll cry. It does expand actually. There's me moaning about it, but it does definitely expand. You just gotta mess around with it for a bit, which is a bit annoying. I would recommend to do this outside in a big bucket, lots of water, mix it all up with your hands, wash them once and then it's done. But I'm just trying to be tricky because I'm a pain in the bum, really. Um, and I'm trying to do it on my kitchen side, which I would have done anyway, even if I weren't filming, to be fair. I'm just a bit of a pain like that. Mix it all in to make sure it's all nice and the worst word in the world, moist. <laughs> and then it'll soak down. Right, there we go. I'm not mixing up no more. If it's not high enough, it's not high enough. Oh, it's the perfect height. Why not, eh? Right, and then I'm just gonna open the little hole a little bit on one side. Oh yeah, because we're putting two in here, aren't we? We're gonna have one white. Having one white one, one violet one. So once they trim them down the roots a little bit on this one. And then these should look really, really pretty. we're done so I'm going to set this up now and show you what the table looks like so for now I like having a little candle on the table so this is one I've got in the cells um, and I've got this little planter here which I think looks rather nice um, and I've also got the larger planter, this end, so I think it looks really, really pretty. Um, and I thought when friends and stuff come over, I can obviously put my teapot on the table. And then I've got my cake dome for if they want to take a cake out. I've got some apple pies in there at the moment. <laughs> um, they won't be there very long. Um, but I thought that'd be quite nice. Or you have them out how I'm going to, which is the free set of free. Um, a little candle on the go and usually we've got a teapot me and Gary drink all of our teas out of the teapot so this is usually what the table's like it isn't too cluttered when people are sitting on it um when you're sat down at eye level as well it's not too in your face it'd come to like sort of chest level of somebody um so yeah that's the tallest one so really really lovely I love the look of these I think they look really country and honestly once these are open they're just so, so beautiful. Hopefully you like this. I'm gonna show you the wreath as well. So I've literally just hung the wreath there for now on my peg rail. It does look really pretty. Um, I just remembered I washed, I went through like a crazy woman and took the command hook off the door. So I do need to get the new stickers for the command hook. Um, but this is an up close of the wreath. And it does look really pretty. And you could make these on much smaller scales and hang them. I mean, I probably would move this over a bit. Um, and it'll look really cute from a peg rail as well really sweet and yeah I might even add a few like little like, paints and books lavender to add that if I was keeping that there but yeah this is my little spring added touch so before I go I was talking about adding something when it comes to Easter to take it from spring to Easter I bought this for two pounds and you can make a little bunny wreath I mean I probably would make sure his ears are sticking out so you can see that he's a proper bunny but you just gotta like glue it on and stuff, but you can make a little bunny wreath. I probably would tie him to the front of this, but as it's not Easter just yet, I'm not doing that just yet, so. And he's weighted, so you could just even have him on a little shelf. But yeah, 
Hopefully you like my little spring bits that I've done, guys, and uh, let me know your thoughts. So, guys, that's been the little bits I've added um, to my house so far for spring. I obviously put some, like, fresh-cut flowers and stuff out. Until Easter comes, I'm not going crazy, but I feel like it just adds something really, really cute. And as I say, you can do it so cheaply. I will link the place where you can get the fancy terracotta pots, but by all means, just get terracotta pots. They sell them in most garden centres really, really cheaply, like under two, three pound. Um, and you could even whitewash them to make them look aged at first. You could buy daffodils, pink flowers, anything to go with your scheme that you like. Um, even do lavender. Lavender is amazing. It always smells really beautiful. It's a really simple, easy way because when you buy fresh cut flowers, they don't last very long. You obviously have these out and they will last for ages. And once they flower, they're just gorgeous. There's lots of ones that are already flowered ready as well, like the ones that are like £1.50 from Tesco's I'm talking about. I can't remember what they're called, but they always have them near the flowers. They're like little pots and they've got a like little pink or white flowers. They're really lovely. They do red little flowers as well. Um, so yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. And I've been Rosie Henshaw. I will be back with a charity shop upcycle of some few bits. And I've got some bits from the Haberdashery as well. So with the charity shop items... With that, I've got some really nice, they are Eastery. I have got to say they are Eastery. So they're going to be in advance ready for Easter, but it gives you a bit of time to make it. I'm going to go now and scrub my nails to death because <laughs> they're black from the compost and tidy all this up. So have a lovely day, guys. Take care. Bye.